We're going to kick off shortly. If we can gather a bit closer to the stage and kind of squeeze in a bit. Uh, hopefully you can all hear me. Thank you and welcome. this morning Yay! thank you so much for coming today to Newington Green in the heart of Islington North where we're gonna get Jeremy Corbyn re-elected today we've got a historic mission where over this weekend we are gonna knock on every single door in Islington North <laughs> we're out here in Newington Green which is part of Mild May Ward and we'll also be canvassing in Highbury. And later on today, we'll be in Whittington Park. We'll be canvassing in Junction Ward, as well as in Tufnell Park Ward. Thank you so much to everyone who's already come out and canvassed and knocked on doors and handed out leaflets and spoken to people outside tube stations. You are a massive help to this operation and it's only because of you that we are able to get where we want to be. And a huge thank you to those of you who are coming for the first time to knock on doors in Islington North today. We're going to hear from a couple of speakers and then at around 11.30 we're going to go straight out and start canvassing. Don't worry if you haven't canvassed before, I'll give you a really quick briefing and your board runners will also be able to give you a bit more of a briefing when you get your boards. But first off, just a couple of things. Apart from a huge thank you for coming today, there's one more plea that I have, which is keep turning up, but also keep turning up, especially on polling day. So if you haven't already told us that you can take polling day off, which will be one of the most important days of this campaign, please, please, please consider taking the time off so you can join us here in Islington North where we'll be running an operation to knock on the doors of every single person who's promised us that they'll be voting for Jeremy on July the 4th. Uh, if you're not signed up to the emails, you can sign up on votecorbin.com and that's where you'll find a form or get emailed a form to let us know that you're coming on polling day. Obviously, please do just turn up on polling day but it's really, really useful if you could tell us beforehand that you're coming so we can allocate you to a particular committee room in a particular ward. I won't go on too long because I know you're not coming here to see me. You're actually coming here to Canvas. And so far, we've had some really, really positive responses on the doorstep. I'm going to shortly introduce our first speaker and then we'll get to the main person and then we'll get to canvassing. But thank you so much for coming out today. We really need to speak to every single voter in Islington North and we've made really good progress, but as you know, we're starting from scratch. We're starting from no data, which is why we need to identify every single person in Islington North and ask them how they're voting. 
and you are a crucial part of that operation. So thank you for joining us today and thank you for coming out again in the weeks ahead. There is only less than 14 days until polling day. This time, two weeks time, we'll know the result. So please stick at it and come back to make sure that we together get the result we want. Because make no mistake, this is a historic election for Islington North and your help and only your help will deliver the result that we need and get Jeremy Corbyn re-elected as the independent MP for Islington North. So thank you so much for coming out today. I'm going to introduce our first speaker and a huge thank you to Dr. Shola Mos Shabamimu for coming along today to say a few words. Hey everybody, how are we doing? Yeah. I'm sorry, do you need your coffee this morning? How are we doing? Yeah. Make some noise! Yeah. No, you didn't get out of bed this morning to be sluggish. You came out of you got out of bed this morning because you have a plan, correct? Yeah. We have an action to bring about, correct? Yeah. So I'm going to ask you this question. Who has the power? We, we do. Are. Oh, I'm sorry, you sound quite as <laughs> What's up with you? Who has the power? We, we do. do. Who has the power? We, we do. do. So when you're walking down, knocking on doors, I need you to remember what? Who has the power? We, we do. do. Let me help you remember. Give me a beat. Come on, let's do it. It's first thing in the morning and we need to get our juices flowing. Correct? Who has the power? We do. Who has the power? We do. Who has the power? We do. Who has the power? We have the power. Who has the power? We have the power. Who has the power? We have the power. Do you know why it's important to remember this? Let me tell you why. Because they've been filling us and feeding us with so much BS in the last five years, telling us who to vote for, who's right for us, who has our interests in that, and we know in the last five years it's been total what? BS! <laughs> Lies! Gaslighting! And I don't know about you, but I'm too old for that. I know I don't look it, but you know, we try. <laughs> and it is time to put a face on our political representation. Do you agree with me? Yes. This is not the time for political loyalty. This is the time for personal loyalty. It is time to have a face in that House of Commons that represents our voices, yes. our feelings, our values. Yes. It is time for us to end the constant lies about what British values are because I no longer recognize what British values are. It seems to change with the tide. And the tide, when it comes to values and norms, can't change. We are either good, kind, accommodating, loving, understanding, or we are not. So the reason why I left my bed miles away, because I'm not part of this constituency, is because I believe that Jeremy Corbyn is the right face for our political representation today. I'm, I'm sorry, am I alone here? Be consistent? Yes. Has he wavered? No. Have we all of a sudden gone, oh, I don't recognize him anymore? No. no. He's not like some people that seem to change their minds and all of a sudden lie at every single opportunity. You know who I'm talking about. Stop. Thank you. <laughs> and not just him, every single one of them. <laughs> the reality here is that the political parties that we have today no longer represent us the way we expect. And you know what? It is time to change the fate of our political representation. Yeah. Jeremy Corbyn is that man. And I've seen him have such moral judgment and leadership in the last seven, eight months on really critical issues like foreign policy, on Palestine and Israel. And I'm like, where the hell is everybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Now is the time when you knock on the door. Remember that some of the people you're going to be knocking on the door um, of will be, will be thinking, well, you know, it's, we don't have proportional representation, so if I don't vote Labour, Tories will come in. 
That's a lie. Say it with me. That's, That's a, a lie. lie. No. I don't listen. Look, look, let me let me explain this. I studied law, okay? Not accountancy, not science, not any of those really, really brain. You know, not the lawyers here are not smart. Of course we are. <laughs> the point I'm trying to say is that it's not rocket science. If all of us decide not to vote for Tories or Labour, guess what? They will not have power. It's really as simple as that. And never is the time to reward the politicians that have stood by us, that have been the voice of reason and logic, who have been beaten down, attacked, smeared, smeared left, right and centre. Now is the time to reward them. This is not the time to be cowardly. What the hell's wrong with you? They've taken over your rights. People go, oh, I'm not into politics. There's something that's very wrong with you because politics is into you, okay? <laughs> politics determines the food on your table, the clothes on your back, the roof over your head. How can you not be into politics? How can you not understand what's going on? So today, as you knock on each door and you say hello, you remember we have the power. And you transmit, transfer, I don't know, use whatever psychic power is out there to let the people you're speaking to know that they have the power. This is the time for us to bring the change we want to see. Voting Tories and Labour will be the status quo. Yep. And stop being afraid. We have to change things and that starts now. That is why... I took the hour or so to come down here to join you guys and to canvas for this young man. <laughs> He's a teenager. Yes, A.G. Keenly. So listen, I want you to remember this because that's what I'm, I'm going to remember. We have the power. We can change this. We need Jeremy Corbyn in the house. I don't see any other, any other person that you have as an option that makes as much sense as he does. And even though I belong to a different constituency, let me tell you, it will give me peace of mind to know that there's a collective voice of people like Jeremy Corbyn in the House of Commons. That is what I'm here. So let's do it again. Who has the power? We have the power. Who has the power? We have the power. Who has the power? We have the power. You guys it just sound like your parents in me. Now give me that power. I want you to put some accent into it. Who has the power? Come on. We have the power. Right? <laughs> You're also damn polite. You can't even move the bones the good Lord gave you. <laughs> now I'm going to do it one more time before they kick me off this stool. <laughs> give me a beat and give me a move. Get your juices flowing. Get your blood pumping and stir that fire in your God-given belly. Who has the power? We have the power. Who has the power? We have the power. Who has the power? We have the power. Who with your back straight up, with some attitude in, in your walk, and if you don't know how to do it, Nigerians can teach you. <laughs> of course, we're all British. British. But listen, thank you so much for listening to me. Let's do this! Give it up to Dr. Shola! And a huge thank you to Dr. Shola, but more importantly you, because as she said, we have the power. So when we're having those conversations today, please remember that. And please remember to speak from the heart, because those are the real conversations that can change people's minds, that can stop them from being a bit weary, being a bit doubtful, to saying, yes, I want to vote for Jeremy Corbyn because we need this man in Parliament. And I can tell you what, we've got the power, but the next parliament is going to be a hell of a lot better if Jeremy Corbyn is there holding whichever government to account on free school meals, on the two-child policy, on peace around the world, on human rights, on anti-racism, on public ownership of our utilities so they're run for the people and not for profit. And to make sure that our NHS does not get privatised by whoever in power because it belongs to us all and we need to remember that and take that message to the voters of Islington North.
Once again, this is the historic weekend where thanks to you, we are knocking on every single door in Islington North. We're starting this morning in Mildmay and Highbury and later on this afternoon we'll be out in Tufnell Park and in Junction when we do a little rally at Whittington Park. And tomorrow, if you're coming back, because you're going to love it so much today, we'll be starting from our campaign office at 11am, which is right by Finsbury Park Station. And then we'll be ending with a rally in the Peace Gardens again at 4pm tomorrow. So please do join us. And there is going to be a little social after each day. And today we've got some lovely poetry in the park, uh, which will be in Whittington Park at 8pm after the canvassing rounds are done. I'm going to go a bit more in detail about how the canvassing is going to work and do a little briefing uh, and we're going to take a picture before we head out. But first off, I'd like to introduce the man we're all here to see re-elected as the independent MP for Islington North, Mr Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> Thank you Artem and first of all a huge thank you to all of the team of volunteers. In three weeks we've built a campaign from absolutely nothing to now this fantastic people powered campaign carrying a message of hope and an alternative in politics. That's why we're here and that's why we're out knocking on doors today. And when uh, Artem says this is historic, he's right. This very place, Newington Green, is incredibly historic in the growth of radical ideas, socialist ideas and radical politics in this country. Mary Wollstonecraft opened her girls' school over there at the end of the 18th, early 19th century. Dr. Richard Price lived over there and he worked in the dissenters' chapel down there which preached an alternative to the uh, hierarchy of the Church of England and the established church. This was a place where they met, they talked, they dreamt and they dreamt of a better world and a world based on peace and on justice. And for their pains, Dr. Price was charged with uh, treason against the British state because he was supporting the principles of the French Revolution. I'm not saying you're all going to get charged with treason for being here today, <laughs> but you never know. But we're here to assert something different. The people of North Islington, through the Labour Party in North Islington, were denied the right to select their own candidate for Parliament. I was denied the right to even have my name considered. And when I, and when I protested about this to the General Secretary of the Labour Party, and uh, gave him a fairly legalistic reason why my name should be put forward, he wrote one line back saying, the rules of natural justice no longer apply in the Labour Party. Oh. Literally. Well, the rules of natural justice are our right, our right to campaign, our right to be heard, our right to demonstrate, and that is what this election is about. And so we're out there with an alternative voice. The alternative voice is housing justice, is rent controls, is regulation of the private rented sector, is building council housing, is taking the stress away from young people, those that have been to university, saddled with massive debts, saddled with very high rents. Those, quite rightly, that are concerned about environmental damage that we're doing and the polluted air that we all breathe want to see a government that intervenes on all of these things to bring about clearer, uh, cleaner air and a better sustainable environment. And a health service that is not sold off to the private sector, that is not dominated by private health interests who play on the fears of people that cannot get treatment to the NHS because of the lack of investment. The answer isn't to use the private sector, the answer is to take over the private sector to provide the resources for everybody, irrespective of their income, to get the care, the support and the help that they need. There are so many issues in this election. And if I'm, and if I'm, and if I'm elected to Parliament, my job will be to speak out on these things. If a government does something good, I'll support them. But if they fall by the wayside and they don't take mail, rail and water back into public ownership, they allow the water companies to carry on pouring sewage into our rivers and sea, then I will be the number one critic to ensure that voice is heard. That is my job as a member of Parliament. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've been very proud to do it all these years and very proud of elected again on July the 4th to do it all over again. It's also about a voice for peace in the world. It's also about bringing an end to the wars in the world, those wars that are fueled by greed, by mineral exploitation, by the arms trade and the horrors that go with it. 
those that have died in the Congo, those that have died in Ukraine, and those that are dying now in Gaza. I will be that voice for peace. I will be that voice to end the occupation of Gaza and the West Bank, to bring about peace. And I do this in concert with many friends in Israel who are very bravely also speaking out against the occupation, as is a united campaign of all people to bring about peace and justice in this world. Faraj and others might want to promote, promote and uh, encourage far-right racism within our society. We are a people that are very different here. We are determined to live in a society that respects all, irrespective of their faith, respects all, and prevents the growth of racism within our society. Ours is a fantastic united campaign. And I'm very proud to be part of it. I'm very proud of the role that all of you are playing in this. Playing in this. So today we're out knocking on doors to remind people that I am the independent candidate, why I'm the independent candidate, and what is what it is that unites us in bringing about a world of hope and justice for the future. Just think about this. Let's make history here in North Islington in the same way that Richard Price, Mary Wollstonecraft, William Godwin, and so many others, and of course the great Percy Shelley, spoke up for justice at a time of deep oppression in the early 19th century. We are speaking up for a different world, a better world, a united world. Let's make history here in Islington North on July the 4th. Thank you very much indeed. We're now going to have Martin, who is commanding today's operation, I believe, to arrange you for a photograph. And then, please, out on the doorsteps, but above all, when you're knocking on doors, be polite, be friendly, be engaging, but above all be accurate so that we know where our support lies so we can gently remind them on July the 4th not to forget to go and vote and take a form of ID with them. Martin, over to you. Thank you, Jamie Cronin! So as Jeremy said, we're going to be going out and knocking on doors. This is just really quickly for the benefit of those who might not have joined us in the last few weeks and might not have canvassed before. So today, as Jeremy said, it's a really positive campaign. We're going out to spread that message of hope, of hope for people of Islington North and the rest of the country. We are going out and asking three questions today mainly. The first question when you're knocking on the door is, did you know Jeremy Corbyn was running as an independent at this election? Because there's a lot of support for Jeremy in this constituency, but there's loads of people who don't know he's not running with the Labour Party and is running as an independent. So open up your conversation by saying, hi, my name is so-and-so, and I'm here with Jeremy Corbyn's campaign. Did you know that he's running as an independent? The second question is, did you vote for him previously? Because a lot of people here did. And the third most important question is, are you voting for him at this election on July the 4th? So those are the three questions. Did you know he's running as an independent? Did you vote for him previously? And are you voting for him at this election? If they're supportive, great. Thank them for their support and please offer them a window poster because we want to get as many posters in this area as possible. If they are not supportive, please do spend a minute or two trying to convince them, but please don't spend ages and ages because we're going to be going back to all those undecided voters from Monday onwards. So do spend a couple of minutes talking about the things that Jeremy stands for, talking about a fully public fully funded NHS, about public ownership, about more support for our school teachers and special needs students, about rent caps and the homelessness crisis, and about all the other things that we know and love Jeremy for. However, we are keeping this campaign quite local. So some of the things that have got a really good reception on the doorstep are talking about how Jeremy and local campaigners helped save the number four bus route, which runs along Seven Sisters Road up to Tufnell Park. That does work really well, trust me. Um, also talking about the NHS, so we did a rally last Saturday outside Whittington Park, sorry, Whittington Hospital, and there a few years ago the a &E, the urgent care department, was under threat of closure because of Tory austerity, but Jeremy, local campaigners, groups like Keep Our NHS Public, fought a campaign and won, and the a &E unit remained opal, open, so please do remind people about that. And also, speaking about private healthcare interests, 
There is a medical centre in this constituency, Hanley Road Medical Centre, that Centene, who are a huge US pharmaceutical giant, try taking over, along with hundreds of others in England. And Jeremy, local campaigners, stopped that from happening, and that medical centre was not taken over by private interest. And finally... Yeah, big cheer for that. And finally, green spaces. We're in a lovely open green space right here in Islington North and green spaces are so important to the people that live here. So we can talk about how Gillespie Park is now a lovely nature reserve, not under threat of development. And that was again thanks to Jeremy and local campaigners who stopped that from being developed. And it's a lovely nature reserve with an ecological centre that lots of school kids go and learn about biodiversity and our environment. And also other green spaces and clean air is a really, really big issue here. So please use those arguments in the doorstep. So protecting bus routes like the number fours, stopping the Whittington Hospital and E department from being shut down and protecting and creating green spaces. There should be more of these briefings from your board runners, but that's just a quick reminder, and especially for those who haven't canvassed with us before. But I'm sure you'll have loads of lovely, lovely conversations. Please do keep this positive, because that's what we're here for. We're here out of, love, out of love for our fellow citizens and our fellow human beings on this planet. So please take that spirit and the spirit that Jeremy has been speaking about just now with you when you go out on the doorsteps. And together, let's make sure Jeremy Corbyn's re-elected here on July So before we go up and canvas, and I'm just going to ask those people who've already got boards to uh, hold them up in the air and have a quick look. So these people with clipboards, if you're holding your clipboards up in the air, those are our board runners. And they, so, so we're going to ask you, as soon as we've taken the photo, to find a board runner and join that group. They've got all the... say vote Corbyn. Sorry, on one. So three, two, one. Vote Corbyn! All right, and one more. Let's hold those posters high. Lovely. And we're going to take a quick video. So on one, we say vote Corbyn again. So three, two, one. Lovely guys, thank you so, so much for coming out here today. We still need a few board runners, so if you don't have a board, but you know how to run a board, please go over to the table on my left. But if you've come along to Canvas, please join a group, find someone holding up a clipboard, and they will be your board runner. There's clipboards out there at the back. And when you've finished the canvas round, please come back here to join the second canvas round after a short break. I can help you take it if you want. Can you help her take it? Any more board runners? If you can make your way over to the table to the right of the stage.
we were here, lucky enough to be in the past a few words. You, you, you're next? You're next? I used to live in that building <laughs> last year, mm -hmm. thanks to him and Katrin from the country, mm -hmm. because we were made homeless. Yeah. And thanks to him, yeah. I got the roof. When? In 2001, mm -hmm. with my family. And he came to help, so how did he do it? I asked uh, Pat Tinset, who was the world councillor, mm -hmm. for help. Yeah. Because they want to evict us, bring us a lot of money for the rent and this. Then Pat asked him, because he was, Pat was the local councillor, mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy was the MP, mm -hmm. to start to put pressure on his council to be outside. Yeah. So now I live in uh, okay. the south. So it worked. Of the well done. Yeah. Uh, I still have all the letters that he was sending to the Let's see. Come, speak to him. Listen to him. Okay, you're from Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera. Okay, first of all, good you. Okay. Uh, how central is the boring guys? Because you, you, you're going to, you've got Russian people. Okay, Jake goes off. There's been 14 national demonstrations. I've been on all of them demanding a ceasefire, demanding an end supply of arms to Israel, demanding the withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza and the West Bank. And also, we're often forgotten that this is the Palestinian refugees that have been in the countries. All right, but how central would be the people's choices? I think, of it their will, MPs. I think it has a big influence on the substantial proportion of the population, not a majority, but a substantial majority raised the issue of Gaza. Not so much with me on the doorstep, because locally they're very well aware of my views on it, but I'm hearing from people all over the world that Gaza is quite frequently on the doorstep which demand to know why their MP did not vote for a ceasefire when they had the opportunity. Do you think Labour will pay for this? I think it will damage any candidate who has supported the bombardment of Gaza and now the death of Zedra. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy, hi. Just Good evening, Stan. Oh, hi. Thank you. Who are you with now? So, I'm um, just helping out. Hello. Hi there. Nice to meet you. Hello again. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Is it okay just to grab your video while we talk? Mm -hmm. so, sorry. Um, so, Jeremy, um, one of the issues you're contending with is um, Labour turning on you. You've obviously had to stand for the And in recent days, Keir Starmer has been making a real point of saying that in 2019, even though he ran in your shadow cabinet, he didn't think that he could win that election. Did he ever have a discussion with you then about how things were going and whether, whether, you, whether you were likely to win or not? He was part of the shadow cabinet and the Green Manifesto. He was part of the... Uh, if you don't have a group and you want to join us canvassing, make your way over here and we'll put you into a group with a board runner. Let's start again, otherwise you're going to talk So, um, did, did Keir Starmer ever share any concerns with you when he was running as part of your show uh, about the prospects of victory then? He was part of the campaign, he was in the shadow cabinet and the course of our meeting with the Green Manifesto. <coughs> And uh, he was part of the campaign too. This sort of uh, reconstruction of history is a really strange thing to do. He was part of that. I was obviously part of that. I know what went on. I know the parts of the people. I also know the levels of the time who run this. So just rewriting history doesn't pass. 
And now you are running against the machines. You're the running against the machines running against me. Well, right. But it's, it's, it's an apparatus that you built up. Um, what are your prospects now? Very strong indeed. We started from zero three weeks ago. We've had a thousand people volunteer to help us in many ways. Door knocking, Just, 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 can we just, can we just do this now? Well, they'll, they'll do so, what they always yeah. do, scrape through. They might do well after that. Well, welcome. Thank you. 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 Thank you.